Now that we've finished the corporate insolvency resolution process, we'll go to, we'll slightly jump a little, we'll go to chapter 4. We're skipping chapter 3, which deals with, uh, chapter 4 deals with the fast track corporate insolvency resolution process. Now, this is actually identical to the corporate insolvency resolution process. The only difference being that this is for slightly smaller entities. So, a corporate, the process, the corporate insolvency process, it starts with section 55, chapter 4, part 2. It's called as the fast track corporate insolvency resolution process. An application shall be made for this process, can be made for the following categories of corporate debtors. Assets, income, debt, class of creditors, as the central government may prescribe or such other category. So it's asset, income, debt, class of creditor, such other criteria. The only, the second next section which is section 56 deals with actually the time limit. Whatever was 180 there is 90 here. Extension there was 90. It is 45 here. Extension can be applied only by committee of creditors. Here also the same thing. 75% majority. Here also the same thing. Only one time extension. Here also the same thing. Same. Okay. Manner. 57. Manner of initiating. Same. You have to give the proof of default. Such other information as may be prescribed. So effectively, virtually it will be the same thing like your normal process, which is your 7, 8, 9, 10. Then applicability of chapter 2 to this chapter. The process for conducting a CIR process under chapter 2 and the provisions relating to offenses and penalties under chapter 7 shall apply to this chapter as the context may require. Finished. Which brings us to another very interesting thing. I told you that there is a corporate insolvency process regulation, right? There is also a fast track process regulation, which is more or less identical, except for five differences. But before I go to the five differences, I will tell you once again what this is. Fast track, same process is contained in chapter 2, same penalties as contained in Chapter 7. Only thing is, it's a concession to certain entities, corporate debtors based on their assets, income, debt or class of creditors or such other type as may be prescribed by the central government. Time limit, 180 there, 90 here, 90 extended, 45 extended, committee of creditors has to approve, committee of creditors has to approve. Only one extension permitted, only one extension permitted. Manner of initiation, same. Need to prove default by way of IU or some other method and such other information as may be required by the board to establish eligibility for fast track. Okay. So if you look at the regulations, there are basically five key differences. One is of course... 180, 90, 90 day extension, 45 day extension. The third is, it shall give the last date of receipt of claims as 14 days from the date of appointment of RP for a normal process. Here it will be 10 days. Then fourth is, report on constitution of committee of creditors shall be filed with NCLT within 31, 30 days, whereas here it will be 21 days. The fifth difference is, there two registered values have to be appointed and if there is a wide variance, then he has to appoint a third valuer. Here, there is no provision for a third valuer, it is only two valuers. So with this, we have also finished chapter 4, 55 to 58. These regulations part I will once again reiterate when I am talking about corporate insolvency regulation.